canals and waterways help ships to get where they're going, but not all are easy to cross. Some waterways are treacherous, with violent currents and super tight squeezes. It takes the best captains in the world to traverse these waterways. So join me for today's video as we take a look through the 15 most extreme canals and waterways in the world. Number 15. The Corinth Canal of all the canals on this list, the one that arguably has the most storied history is the Corinth Canal. It's a man-made canal in Greece. It connects the Gulf of Corinth with the Ionian Sea, with the Saronic Gulf and the Aegean Sea. During the reign of the ancient Roman Emperor Nero, work began on creating the canal, and with the help of Judean prisoners of war, the empire managed to build 10% of the canal. However, the plans were abandoned after Nero's death, and the uncompleted canal sat untouched until the Greek Republic began construction on it in 1881. Because its narrowness, high channel walls, and its tendency of the limestone to erode into landslides, this made the canal far too dangerous for large ships, and the result is the Corinth Canal is almost exclusively used by small pleasure vessels. Number 14. The Houston Canal Texas is one of the United States' most economically important states, and so it makes sense that it's home to a massive port and canal that facilitates all of its trade. Known as the Houston Canal, it offers a conduit for vessels between the city of Houston and the Gulf of Mexico. Opened in 1914, the canal allowed Houston to replace Galveston as Texas's main harbor, with this being seen as preferable since Houston was farther inland and thus less susceptible to damage via hurricanes. As such, the Houston Canal continues to be busy, and today it's considered to be the United States' second largest port. Number 13. The Volga Don Canal The Volga and Don Rivers are two of Russia's most important waterways, and the Volga Don Canal that connects them is unsurprisingly quite important as well. Now, while construction of the canal was first begun by the Ottomans in the 16th century, after bad weather conditions and Russian invasions hindered the construction, the canal building effort was abandoned after about one third of it had been completed. The initiative was then once again reignited by Peter the Great, but ultimately failed, and it was only in 1948 that a successful construction attempt finally began. Opened in 1952, the 101 kilometer long waterway features nine one chamber canal locks and currently provides the shortest navigable connection between the Caspian Sea and the world's oceans. As such, given its continued use to this day, it's considered to be one of the Soviet Union's crowning industrial achievements. Number 12. The Beijing Hanshou Grand Canal. China is home to lots of important infrastructure, and the Beijing Hanzhou Grand Canal stands apart for not being very high-tech, but for instead being very old. Covering a length of around 1,700 kilometers, it stands apart for being the world's oldest and longest canal. It's been constructed in sections ever since the 5th century BC, and more or less reached its present size by the 1200s. Built in order to transport goods and create a unified communication system between northern and southern China, it was one of the most important infrastructure projects in Chinese history, and to this day it's still used extensively to facilitate trade. And while its old age means that countless repairs have been made and that floods have caused some extensive damage at times, the Beijing Hanshou Grand Canal has stood as a timeless testament of imperial Chinese engineering. Number 11. The Xochimilco Canals while there are plenty of beautiful canal systems, one of the few to be considered a World Heritage Site are the Xochimilco Canals of Mexico City. Located in a southern borough of modern-day Mexico City, the canals are 170 kilometers long and connect the 18 neighborhoods of this area along with 14 villages that surround it, and they date back to a period before Spanish colonization of Mexico. Interestingly enough, canals like the ones at Xochimilco used to cover all of Mexico City, yet due to Spanish invasions, decreased water levels, and other geographic and political factors, only the ones at Xochimilco are left. Today, they are now a multi-purpose waterway, as the canal not only facilitates trade, but also it's home to plenty of tourist attractions such as a colorful gondola service and the super creepy Island of the Dolls, which is a supposedly haunted island filled with cracked doll carcasses. So, if you ever go on a trip to Mexico, I'd suggest checking out the Xochimilco Canals. Number 10. Non Madal. While Venice may be home to the world's most famous system of man-made canals, it's the not-as-well-known Nanmadal that's the rough equivalent of Venice in the Pacific. 
located on the island of Pompeii, which is not to be confused with the Italian city of Pompeii. The Federated States of Micronesia, Nan Madal, was the capital of the Saladur dynasty until about 1628, and it consists of a series of small artificial islands linked by a network of canals. Likely created sometime around the year 1200, each small island served a special purpose, and at its peak the city sustained about 25,000 people. What made it unique was that it relied almost completely on outside shipments in order to survive, and in a clever act of political maneuvering, the capital city was home to all of the area's chiefs, which ensured that the Sadolur dynasty's rulers could keep an eye on them and ensure that they didn't amass too much power. However, after an invasion by a neighboring power, the city quickly experienced a state of decline, and now the site sits largely abandoned and unvisited. Number 9. The Bangkok Canals Bangkok is a city that's known for being humid, swampy, and low to the ground, and as a result, it's the perfect place for a canal system. Dating back to the founding of the city in 1782, these canals have historically served a number of important purposes, as they were consistently used as a means of transportation, as a source of food and water, and as part of various ceremonies. While these canals were expanded during the 19th century, by the 20th century a road-based system had become preferable, and soon many of the canals were filled up in order to make way for land-based vehicle traffic. However, despite the fact that the canals are less extensive than they used to be, they are nonetheless still very important for the city's economic life, as the 1,682 canals come in at a total length of over 2,600 kilometers and are filled with small boats that transport goods and people around the city. So, if you ever get the chance to visit Bangkok, I'd suggest going for a boat ride in the canals in order to get an authentic sense of this incredible city. Number 8. The Danube Black Sea Canal Of all the canals on this list, the one that likely has the most negative reputation is the Danube Black Sea Canal. Built in order to connect the Danube River with the Black Sea, it is, in theory, economically useful due to the fact that it indirectly connects the North Sea and the Black Sea via the Rhine-Main-Danube Canal System, which in turn allows for Northern and Southeastern Europe to be connected by water. Now, while it was successfully built between 1976 and 1987 by Romania's communist regime, an earlier attempt between 1949 and 1953 remains notorious to this very day. This is because in an attempt to build both the canal and eliminate undesirable minorities, communist authorities put political prisoners such as disenfranchised farmers, members of dissident political parties, and both Catholic and Orthodox priests to work as forced laborers. And they fed them very little, made them use primitive machinery such as shovels and pickaxes, and ultimately killed over 10,000 people in the process. When you further consider that the canal has proven to be relatively unused, it becomes clear that the entire project may have been a massive waste of time, money, and innocent lives. Number 7. The Kiel Canal While the Suez and Panama canals may take the cake for being some of the world's most famous canals, it is in fact the Kiel Canal that's the world's busiest. It's located in the German state of Schleswig-Holstein and connects the North Sea and the Baltic Sea, and due to its annual ship traffic being an incredible 32,000 vessels, it's a massive source of economic vitality in the region. Now, the canal's construction began in 1887 thanks to a mix of naval interests and commercial pressures, and in 1895 it was officially opened. It was an instant success, and it was soon widened to allow dreadnought-sized battleships through, and while a brief stint as an internationalized waterway happened after Germany's loss in World War I, for most of its history it's been the property of the German government. Now, the one downside of the Kiel Canal is that its bridges have proven to have clearance that's too small to allow most cruise ships through. Despite this, it's still a massive thoroughfare of international shipping, and when you consider that the Kiel Canal's 98-kilometer stretch saves ships an average of 460 kilometers on each leg, it's not hard to see why the canal is so well used. Number 6. The Canals of Amsterdam While the canals of Venice may be Europe's most famous set of municipal canals, the canals of Amsterdam are certainly a close second. Also known as the Venice of the North, Amsterdam first began to dig canals during its golden age of trade and development at the beginning of the 1600s. In what was essentially one massive infrastructure project, three main canals were built and houses around them were constructed, and when the initiative was completed in about 1660, the city had grown to four times its original size and arguably had the most intricate and efficient system of navigable waterways in the world. 
These canals served an important role in facilitating the trade around the important port city, while their convenience also allowed many people to boat to and from their places of work. However, once Amsterdam began to decline in prominence, the need for these canals decreased, and by the 20th century, canals began to be filled in to make way for streets, parking spaces, and garbage dumps. However, despite this, fierce protest from residents ensured that some of the canals were maintained, and today about 25% of the city's surface still consists of usable canals, and in total this amounts to about 105 kilometers of waterways to explore. Number 5. The Rideau Canal now, generally speaking, most canals are in areas that are warm enough so the water remains in liquid all year round. However, in Canada's capital city of Ottawa, the Rideau Canal goes against this classic narrative. Connecting Ottawa to both the St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario, the Rideau Canal is a 200-kilometer-long route that was completed in 1832 by the British in order to defend against the United States. You see, during this time period, there was little love between the two countries, and after the War of 1812, there was a very real possibility that another war would be sparked between the two nations. Therefore, in order to provide a transport link between the major cities of Montreal and Kingston, the Rideau Canal was built. Now, in a fortunate turn of events, the Rideau Canal had never been used for defensive or war-related purposes, but it soon became very important due to its economic value. This is because as the economy in the area grew, the Rideau Canal began to be used to transport goods between Montreal and the Great Lakes region. However, once railways, highways, and more direct canals began to be built, the Rideau Canal largely lost this economic purpose, and soon it became far more common for pleasure craft to use it for recreational purposes. Nowadays, this historic site is perhaps most famous for its use as a massive skating rink when it freezes over during the winter, making it truly a beloved spot for those who live near it. Number 4. The Venice Canal System When it comes to canals, few are quite as famous as the Venice Canal System. Connecting the various parts of Venice, the canals are essentially thin water passages that allow small ships to move through the city with ease, and they first were created right when the city was founded. You see, Venice was essentially built on a swamp, and so in order to make the area fit for human habitation, the city's early settlers had to drain parts of the lagoon, dig canals, and shore up the banks. After the draining, the canals were lined with closely spaced wooden stakes made from water-resistant alder wood, and these were essentially driven into the sand and mud to create what have now become almost stone-like wooden platforms. And while there are plenty of small canals that snake through the city, the largest and most impressive is the Grand Canal, which is a massive waterway that's the city's main thoroughfare for transportation. Now, in the past, these canals were largely navigated with the help of gondolas, which are long, slim boats that work well with the relatively thin waterways. However, gondolas have now been relegated to the tourist market, and today, small motorized boats and water taxis are the most important vehicles on the canals. If that wasn't enough, the canal system is also dotted with a series of very famous bridges, with the most famous bridge being the Rialto Bridge, which is a massive and ornate white bridge that was completed in 1591. When you further consider that Venice has about 28 million visitors a year, I think it's fair to say that many would consider the Venice Canal system to be the world's most visited. Number 3. The Panama Canal While there are plenty of canals on the American continent, the Panama Canal is the most important by a wide margin. Located on the Panama Isthmus, it connects the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, allowing ships to no longer have to go around the southern tip of South America or the northernmost portion of North America to get to the other side of the American continent. Now, despite the United States' dominance in the region, it was actually France that was the first country to take a shot at building the canal, with the idea being that such a venture could be a very profitable way to increase French revenues. However, the French soon realized that creating the canal was a greater engineering challenge than they had bargained for. First and foremost, the massive amounts of rain during the wet season made digging the canal nearly impossible. This was only made worse by the fact that the canal had a high middle portion and a heavy prevalence of deadly tropical diseases. As a result, while the Panama Canal was a relatively short 82-kilometer stretch, it proved much more difficult for the French to handle than the Suez Canal. And so after spending $300 million and facing 22,000 casualties, the French ultimately gave up on the project. This led to the United States taking over, and through a series of sneaky diplomatic moves and military muscle, they more or less invaded Panama, created the canal, and profited handsomely from it. 
Well, this has led to problems that continue over a hundred years on. The end result was that the canal was completed in 1914, and its three locks and wide ship allowance ensure that it facilitates incredible amounts of economic activity to this very day. Number two, the Suez Canal. When it comes to trade, one of the most significant canals to have ever been constructed is the one and only Suez Canal. It's located in Egypt. This 193-kilometer-long canal connects the Red Sea and the Mediterranean. And while it's now a massive thoroughfare that can accommodate ships that are up to 77 and a half meters wide, this has not always been the case. You see, the Suez Canal can trace its origins back to ancient times, when the so-called Canal of the Pharaohs was likely built to connect the Nile with the Red Sea. And since the Nile is connected with the Mediterranean, this would have provided an indirect route between the two waterways. However, even if this route was built, it would have been rather small, and as a result, only smaller ships would have been able to make it through. In any case, this canal, if it did exist, was lost to history, and for years, major powers like the British Empire would access their Asian holdings simply by using horse-drawn carriages to transport troops and supplies across to the Red Sea, where they would have been picked up by British ships and transported to the colonies. Over the centuries, various powers such as the Venetians, Ottomans, and Napoleonic French all considered building a canal for various different reasons, but it was ultimately a team effort between a de facto independent Egypt and the French Suez Company that got the initiative off its feet. Begun in 1859, the canal was ultimately completed in 1869, and after a few years became an invaluable route for many countries to conduct trade. However, given the region's political instability, the Suez Canal has had a few closures over the years, with the most notable being during the Arab-Israeli Wars, which effectively closed the canal between 1967 and 1975, forcing ships to go around the southern tip of Africa. Yet in more modern times, things have been a little less chaotic, and while the random mishaps such as the blockage caused by the Ever Given in 2021 and the Affinity 5 in 2022 have caused delays, all in, the Suez Canal now runs quite smoothly. Number 1. The Northwest Passage while the Northwest Passage may see very little usage, its storied past and incredible potential in the wake of increased global warming may one day make it one of North America's most important waterways. You see, for decades, the British made attempts to find a passage through their Arctic territories, but after constant failures, it was a Norwegian explorer named Roald Amundsen that finally managed to do the deed in 1906. While he was able to make the journey thanks to his small boat, small crew, and wise idea to work with the Inuit people, who were the native people in the region, his route was so shallow that it simply could not be used for commercial shipping. As a result, more research was done into the passage, although the harsh reality was that by 1914, the newly built Panama Canal basically ended any hope of the development on the waterway. It was in this relatively quiet state that the Northwest Passage sat until in the early 2010s, global warming began to melt the permafrost and ice that had previously made much of the passage impossible to navigate. This created a situation where many Canadian companies would hypothetically save large amounts of time and money by using the canal. Yet due to the lack of ports along the waterway and resistance to change, shipping has only slowly increased. To make matters worse, the area is also very environmentally sensitive, and many experts worry that the warming and pollution from ships in the Northwest Passage may expedite the already rapid melting of the polar ice caps. This is all further complicated by the fact that there are diplomatic disagreements about the route, as while Canada claims that the Northwest Passage is within its territorial waters and therefore its property, the United States and other NATO powers often claim that it's actually an international seaway that's not under Canadian jurisdiction. As a result of all this political uncertainty, Canada would be taking a pretty large risk in building up the waterway. However, if global warming continues as it has, the incentive to make some serious cash may soon be too attractive for the Canadian government to ignore. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.